Zero. Zero is the number of states in which a minimum wage worker can afford a two-bedroom apartment working a 40-hour work week. With federal minimum wage resting at only $7.25 per hour, a full-time employee earns only $15,080 annually. Hardly enough to support oneself, let alone a family. If the federal minimum wage had kept up with inflation over the past 40 years, it would have been as much as $10.74 per hour, but is even that enough? The city of SeaTac, Washington has raised its minimum wage to $15. This change has created a similar push in Seattle, Washington for a similar wage increase. If $15 is considered a livable wage, then why is minimum wage less than half of that? According to a national poll, 74% of Americans consider raising the minimum wage to be an important priority for Congress to address over the next year. In order to hear some first-hand experience, I went here to the Lego store in Bellevue Square Mall and met up with minimum wage employee Benj Salkind. Alright, so I work here at the Lego store. Um, I do work minimum wage. It's really hard to get 60 hour work weeks in because there's so many people and I can't get all the shifts I need. And it's really hard because I need to pay for things like college and living and meeting all my basic needs. Um, and you think working at a Lego store would be hard, but it's, it, I mean, it can get hard at times. Sometimes I have to do a lot of packing and stuff, but it's how many hours I have to work and how little I get paid, which is hard. To hear from another source, I talked to Chris Sun, an Asian immigrant who is also employed for minimum wage. Um, I came here six years ago. I moved to America for a better uh, opportunity. But now I'm stuck in the same situation as before. I'm still working to survive and surviving to work. So I'd like to see the rest of our country follow SeaTax example. Uh, our jobs may not require as much skill as others, but they're important too. Um, the money we're being paid isn't equal to our effort, and minimum wage might be enough to get by all right in some places, but the cost of living is so high here, it just doesn't work. Um, United States of America is a place where everyone could live the life they wanted, but um, I don't see that happening. So, how much do you think you should be paid for your work? Uh, you know, I'd like it to be $15, like at SeaTac, but anything's really a good start. $12 would be great, even $11 would be great. Anything that gets the ball rolling for a future change, I guess. Um, Australia's minimum wage is about $17. Um, France's minimum wage is about $12. And I can't see why our minimum wage should be lower than theirs. Um, there's so many people at my position who could buy off things more, and more money we spend, um, the better economy we get. So, uh, how would you say the tightness of money affects you the most? Uh, it really just means I can't go have, out and have fun like everyone else. I don't really have the time or the money. Uh, you know, I've loved skiing ever since I was a little kid, uh, <laughs> but with the amounts of shift I have to, shifts I have to work, uh, I don't really have time to go up to the mountains, or really the money to afford gear, or the trips, or anything really. Um, at this point, I can't really enjoy my life because of a really low minimum wage. Um, all that really matters for now is um, getting food on the table and a roof on top of my head. Um, I can't imagine having kids and provide their needs. Our lives are affected by minimum wage employees more than we would typically consider. The conveniences in our experiences are often a result of their underappreciated work. From ordering food to dealing with our problems, minimum wage workers are the country's unsung heroes. Just take a step back and look at what is truly important in the grand scheme of things. Our country has, for the most part, transcended the threshold at which survival is the main goal and have adopted happiness and fulfillment as our new purpose. We're at the point where surviving doesn't mean you are truly alive. We need entertainment, hobbies, time to ourselves, or else, what's really the point of it all? You say money can't buy happiness, and I agree. What we really need is time. With minimum wage so low, the amount of hours needed just to meet those survival needs of the past is obscene, 
and inhibits the pursuit of happiness for many. There's a giant population of tens of millions of people just in our country alone who have neither the time nor the money to pursue their passions and accomplish their goals and feel fulfilled. The financial inequality is indirectly creating social divides between those who can enjoy certain aspects of life and those who can't. I'm not saying that everyone should have the same spending power. That defeats the purpose of our capitalist system after all. What I am saying is that increasing the spending power of the huge population at the bottom will somewhat lessen this social divide and give everyone a chance to enjoy fulfilling lifestyles. The issue is the top 1% of the population owning all the wealth. The problem of CEOs making hundreds of times more money than their workers isn't an issue many other places than the US. A higher minimum wage would work to distribute this prosperity among our entire country while still maintaining our current capitalist system. The collective quality of life should be as high as possible. That's all that really matters. Being happy.